this is the amount of momentum that water particles are carrying in upward direction and just after hitting the can wall the same amount of momentum is being carried in downward direction. Hello students, today I am here to discuss one simple problem from well you can say it is from fluid mechanics chapter. So let us have a look at the problem. An inverted garbage can of weight W is suspended in air by water from a geyser. There is a geyser which is throwing out water in upward direction. There is a stream of water being thrown out from this geyser and there is a garbage can, this is just a dustbin, a plastic bucket kind of thing uh, which remains here at height at height h, some height h due to the force applied by the gushing water. So, this water stream hits this can, this can and the can remains in equilibrium at certain height from the ground. So, the question says this garbage can has weight w and remains suspended in air by water from the geyser. The water shoots up from ground with speed v naught, water shoots up from ground with speed v naught, here the speed of water is v naught at a constant rate of k kilogram per second and the amount of water being shot up. Uh, per second is k kilogram, k kilogram per second. The problem is to find the maximum height at which the garbage, garbage can rides. What is the maximum height above the ground at which this garbage can actually remains stationary? It rides means it remains stationary due to the force applied by the water stream. Assume that water makes elastic collision with the pan and consider water to be incompressible. Water is incompressible and just assume that water uh, hits the pan and the collision is elastic, water particles rebound after having elastic collision with the pan. Uh, you can to keep things simple, you can just uh, forget about the effect of water leaving the can. I mean if there is some amount of water inside the can and it is leaving then you can start thinking that it is a variable mass problem and all those things, uh, forget about those things no such effect is being considered here. It is just that water stream hits the uh, can and the can stays in equilibrium. Water is incompressible that is the question that is what the question asks you to believe. So, I think this is a fairly easy question and all of you should give it a try. <coughs> I am getting out of the screen capture the question give it a try and here goes the solution. Uh, the stream has initial speed v naught no doubt here it is v naught. So, if okay rather just a minute, just a minute, if this height, if this height is h, then what will be speed of the water particles at height h? Here the speed is v naught, what will be speed here? <coughs> so, it is quite easy to understand that speed of the water particles when they are at height h will be given by under root of v naught square minus 2 g h. Actually, in case of flowing fluid, uh, we should say that we are applying Bernoulli's equation. Yes, we are applying Bernoulli's equation to get this, is not it? What is that Bernoulli's equation? Very simple. At this point, it is a stream, free stream of water. So, pressure around that stream is nothing but atmospheric pressure. So, here the pressure is atmospheric pressure, height, let us assume here height is 0 and half rho v square. So, there is pressure energy per unit volume, this is gravitational potential energy per unit volume and this is kinetic energy per unit volume and it remains constant in steady flow. So, we are assuming that this water stream is having a steady flow and when water particles reach here, we are supposed to calculate the speed. So, I am applying Bernoulli's equation. I have written three terms at this point and I will write three terms at this point also. So, what is pressure there? Again, it is P naught because it is basically the water stream is subjected to atmospheric pressure only. There is nothing else which is applying pressure on it. So, P naught. <coughs> height, the, in this case, it is rho g h, the h is the height. So, potential energy per unit volume is rho g h and speed, this is what we wish to calculate. Let us say speed is v. So, one can see that rho rho cancels out and what you get is this equation. 
So, speed when water particles reach the can uh, is under root v naught square minus 2 g h. Of course, because uh, there is no change in pressure energy actually, when there is a jet of water in atmosphere, there is everywhere the pressure is atmospheric pressure and there is no change in pressure energy when the water flows. So, when you take aside the pressure energy, uh, there are only two forms of energy left in case of ideal flow and that is gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy. So, basically it is a sum of kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy remains constant as, as the water jet moves through the uh, atmosphere because there is no change in pressure. So, the Bernoulli's equation basically simply becomes uh, kinetic energy plus gravitational potential energy is constant and that is what we have seen there and therefore, it is an easy guess that speed will be under root of v naught square minus 2 g h. Okay. So, from this geyser, from this geyser, water is gushing out at a rate of k kilogram per second. At every cross section, at every cross section, at every cross section in the stream, k kg water passes in one second, at every cross section, because it is a steady flow. So, if at this cross section, it is 5 kg of water passing per second, then at some other height, at this cross section also, there will be 5 kg of water passing per unit time. So, at every cross section, the amount of rate of water flow remains same, it is k kg per second. So, here just before hitting the can, just before hitting the can, this water stream is having a speed v and k kg per second water is crossing the cross section. That means, k kg water per second is hitting the surface of the can. Uh, with speed v, this is what it means. So, water particles moving at speed v hit the can and the amount of water hitting the can per second is k kilogram per second, k kilogram per second. So, actually we need to understand at what rate the momentum is being supplied to the can, is not it? The stream carries mass at a rate of dm by dt that is k kilogram per second, dm by dt means uh, rate of flow of mass through any cross section uh, that is equal to k kilogram per second. So, under steady conditions the rate of mass flow is constant which with an equal amount of mass passing through any horizontal plane per unit time. You take any horizontal cross section same amount of water is passing through it per unit time. This is what happens in case of steady flow. Therefore, rate of momentum flow through any cross section uh, per second how much momentum is crossing a cross section. The answer is pretty straightforward. k kilogram mass moving at speed v crosses through a cross section per second. So, k kilogram mass per second moving at speed v. So, so many amount of kg meter per second unit of momentum whatever it is. So, so many units of momentum is crossing through a cross section in one second and this is what this is the amount of momentum that is hitting the can wall or the uh, surface of the bottom surface of the can per unit time. So, per second the amount of momentum that the water carries to the can is V into K. Because the question says that collision is elastic and according to the question we are discussing the situation when the can remains floating, the can remains stationary, there is no movement in the can. So, water impinges on the can wall at speed v and rebounds at the same speed v because the collision is elastic and this particular can is not moving. So, water drops hit the can surface with speed v and they just uh, reverse their motion with same speed v. So, in fact, uh, k kg of water per second hits the can with speed v and reverses its motion. So, per second the amount of change in momentum that the water particles experience will be double of this. I hope you all understand. Momentum x in upward direction changes to momentum x in downward direction. In that case, the change in momentum is 2x, magnitude of change in momentum is 2x. So, v k, this is the amount of momentum that water particles are carrying in upward direction and just after hitting the can wall, the same amount of momentum is being carried in downward direction. So, water stream experiences a change in momentum of twice of v k in unit time. So, the water stream experiences change in momentum of twice of v k in unit time. Water stream experiences change in momentum because the can wall, the dust bin 
uh, garbage can whatever it is it exerts force on the water so water stream experiences change in momentum because the can exerts force on it from newton's third law same amount of force is applied by water on the can so this is the rate at which momentum is changing and this is nothing but uh, the force that the water stream exerts on the can so in case of elastic collision the force will be two times of this which is 2 vk so due to hitting of water stream the force that the can experiences is 2 vk and therefore uh, 2 vk when it becomes equal to weight of the can the can stays there so if can is staying at height h and the force upward force is 2 vk which is equal to weight of the can it will stay there floating kind of uh, isn't it so 2 vk is equal to w writing this you get the value of v v is w by 2k w stands for weight of the can and when the water is at height h from the ground surface its speed v is actually under root v naught square minus 2 g h which we have calculated so in place of v i am writing under root v naught square minus 2 g h this is equal to w by 2k simplify this and you get the value of h so this is the height at which uh, the can will remain stationary actually if you bring the can downward then it will experience more force because uh, at some downward point the water particles are moving at much greater speed and therefore uh, they will exert more force force greater than the weight of the can and it will push the can up so ultimately the can is going to stay in equilibrium only when it is at this height i think you all have got the solution uh, please like the video keep sharing i request you again and see you in the next video. Goodbye till then.